Stacy. I'm a baker at heart and you're a savory cook to the core. I can't live without a box of frozen chicken nuggets and you're strictly DIY. I'm team hamburger. You love hot dogs, but we agree on a lot and nothing more enthusiastically than dessert. Dessert! I couldn't agree with you more. And we don't just believe in dessert for ourselves. We believe in dessert for everyone, which is why we love Enlightened Desserts by the makers of our favorite snack, Bada Bean Bada Boom. Enlightened offers low sugar, feel good desserts that anyone can enjoy no matter what their food choice is. From light ice creams and snackable cookie dough bites, yum, to low carb single serve cheesecakes and dairy free desserts. You probably know me well enough to know this already, but I cannot get enough of the Enlightened Single Serve Cheesecakes. And because they are low carb, which is how I try to eat, I sometimes enjoy them as a lunch dessert without worrying about any kind of crash that will destroy my afternoon. You also know me well enough to know that all I care about are the flavors. <laughs> Enlightened's variety is huge and right up my alley. From cookies and cream to marshmallow peanut butter, chocolate chip cookie dough to caramel fudge pretzel. Bring it on. Woo! Feel good desserts for all. Delivered frozen straight to your door when you order from eatenlightened.com. Find out more about Enlightened and grab a link to their site from didn'tijustfeedyou.com. And don't forget to use the code DIJFY10 to get 10% off of your order and free shipping. It's not just about the amount of money you spend. It's also about maximizing every dollar you spend. It's about the money you don't throw away in wasted food, right? Exactly. So when you throw it away, that dollar that you spent, you actually only got 50 cents of value out of it. Welcome to Didn't I Just Feed You? A podcast about feeding kids. Hi, I'm Stacy, And I'm Megan. Hey, are you subscribed to Didn't I Just Feed You? I think you should do that right now, wherever you're listening. And if you find yourself with an extra minute or two, maybe leave us a sweet little rating or a review. Those ratings really help other busy parents and home cooks find us on all of the podcast platforms, which is why we ask you in every single episode. (laughs) We do. We do. It's actually a very useful thing, as is today's topic. I know. I'm really excited to talk about meal planning on a budget. Or is it how meal planning is essential to saving on your grocery budget? Whoa, mm-hmm. which came first? I Chicken think and it might be. <laughs> hey, so I think we should just like very upfront acknowledge the fact that as food editors, food writers, we have a lot of privilege when it comes to food. We have larger than average budgets for spending on groceries. We get sent grocery samples a lot and we get to write off a lot of our grocery spending. So it's like pretty easy for us. But we've both definitely had the seasons of our lives where we've needed to be on a budget and groceries are one of the biggest expenses. If you have a family, I mean, Groceries are one of the biggest expenses, even if you're like a single person, right? Or you have a partner. Like, I just think groceries are expensive. So I think that we want to really like meet everyone where they're at right now, where like a lot of people's income has changed in the last year and they're dealing with fresh challenges when it comes to feeding their family and the expense of that. Yeah. So Megan, I'm really glad that you brought that up because I do feel like The pandemic has not only changed a lot of people's actual like working budgets, but it's changed the way that we're spending money. It's changed how much we're eating at home. Oh my gosh, yes. And I think that it's also changed our mindset about money. I don't know, maybe I'm just projecting, but our income in my house is secure for the moment, but Everything feels really different than it did before. Things are precarious. So I think that we're going to be giving really concrete tips for how to get, like tighten your belt and still eat really well as much as possible to maximize your budget. But also at the end of the day, these tips just help you be smarter about how you spend money on groceries regardless of your budget. Word up. I will say my grocery budget has changed drastically in the last year because my brother came to stay with us at the beginning of COVID sort of quarantine and he is still with us. Um, For better or worse. (laughs) 
And not even just like, oh, now everyone is having breakfast and lunch at home and snacks every single day of the week at home. But we have a whole other person to add to our grocery budget. But like you, I have a lot of like security in my income and Brian is still making his freelance income. So we haven't had to like change any other budgetary things, but we're just like also always trying to find ways to like feed everyone but also not really like not spend more on food than on our mortgage is always the goal (laughs) so you know our budget has stayed pretty much exactly the same which i think is weird and interesting but we budget for groceries and eating out together so like we have a like a food i think it might even be food and entertainment i haven't looked super recently but In general, we're actually spending less on food overall because we live in New York City and we do try to order in once a week to support local businesses, but some weeks we don't, some weeks it's two, but we're not ordering like it'll be like pizza or be, you know, Mike and I used to go on a date night every single week, one date night a week, and Mike would eat lunch out at his office and now he's eating at home if yeah. I can get him away from his desk to eat at all in the afternoon. So that's really interesting that you, your grocery budget hasn't really changed. Do you think that you immediately like when you realized everyone was going to be home and that you were going to be able like you would be eating at home more like that you did intuitive shifts in how you plan and shop without actually realizing it? I think that I could not possibly spend more on groceries from what I <laughs> The shift was in my brain, like, Biatch, if you spend more on groceries, it's insane. That's intuitive to That's me. That's intuitive. I think, yeah, yeah. Um, I also think that I'm smarter about how I cook. And a lot of the tips that we're actually going to get into, like, I'm cooking dinners, thinking about leftovers for lunch the next day. Like, Mike is eating a lot more leftovers, which we used to... I think we have less waste. I think I had a ton of food before, and we were wasting more. And then I think I've made little shifts because I'm home more. I'm not, like, running around as much. I've been able to offset any extra food spending with things like buying dried beans instead of canned beans because I'm home. And why wouldn't I just throw them in the Instant Pot? They'll taste better anyway. Yeah. Those kinds of little shifts and everything has kind of offset each other and equalized. Can I say, I pinky promise that won't be all of our advice. Like, oh, just buy the cheaper thing that requires you to prep more. Because (laughs) I know everyone is like so, so burnt out on cooking. Um, Especially if in the beginning you were like, I'm home. I'm going to be like a pioneer person and make sourdough bread and cook dry beans and all that stuff. (laughs) I 100% feel called out because I had that moment. I do too. We have a whole episode about sourdough and all of those things. So if we're, I'm only calling myself out. I definitely was land. like, oh yes, I'm going to be so industrious and do all these things to save money. And then probably like two months in, I was like, whew, no, I what mean, can I stock my freezer with? Because I, I can't cook this much. Also like WTF was I thinking like, I'm going to live off the land of ye old Brooklyn. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> Phyllis, oh my God. People I'm do. saying it to myself. Yeah. They do. do for sure. Uh, we have neighbors with chickens, but you know, that's not that's not my life. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I think we like the reason we're saying this is not just like how to feed your family on a budget, which is something we've covered before actually with the budget mom, maybe yes. two years ago. So we'll link to that episode in the show notes for sure. And that's very revealing in the actual dollars that we spend every month if you're really nosy like I am. Um, <laughs> we also had a conversation with Amira Martin. Oh, yeah. About like affordable school lunches yeah. and snacks too. Yep. And so I think that's really helpful now since we're all making those lunches <sighs> and snacks. Yeah, yeah. And she's a homeschool mom, so she has always been doing that. I have to she tell has really you, great advice. Yes. I just made like quesadillas. There's a place around the corner from my house that is owned by these two guys who call themselves masa nerds. So it's very Brooklyn, right? And so they have like three different kinds of masa and they make homemade corn tortillas. So when you go, it's a cafe, you can eat there, but you can also get provisions. And when you order a dozen or half dozen tortillas, they literally make them on the press right there, wrap them in paper and you get them warm. 
it's delicious. And they have like, like that Oaxacan string cheese. It's like all the real deal stuff. And I made these delicious quesadillas with their homemade salsa matcha. And Isaac was like, this is the tiniest quesadilla I've ever eaten. Like, (laughs) where's my lunch? (laughs) And you're like, no, but it's like a very boutique quesadilla. It's very special. (laughs) I mean, I had eaten two of them (laughs) before I showed up. (laughs) So I didn't have enough to give them more than just one. But like feeding them lunch is like a whole situation. So I think that's a really helpful tip. Yes, a great episode to check out. Okay, so I was trying to come around to this point that – even though you're a little bit more of a meal prepper than a meal planner, and I'm like a diehard meal planner who's who had previously fallen off the wagon and is back on it, we both really believe that like the number one biggest thing that you can do to save money is to meal plan. Yes. So I have a question for you. Let's yes. start it off. I've never done this, but I have this instinct that planning meals monthly, even if you don't shop monthly, is a smart thing to do for your budget. I think it is. And actually, there are people, much smarter people than I, who do like seasonal meal plans. I think of the late Kendra Adachi of The Lazy Genius. She plans a month at a time, as does Amira Martin, who we've, with both of these women we've had as guests in the past. Kendra does like a seasonal list of things that she knows her family loves or that that are like really into for a season. And then she pulls from that list and collates that with their like schedule to plan every single month. So when she, so I think the idea of like planning monthly sounds really overwhelming, but if you do something like that, it's less so. And the thing about planning monthly is that really gives you the opportunity to buy things in bulk if you're able to. I think that's like a little challenging because not everyone can go to Costco at the beginning of the month and spend $300 on like staple ingredients and me and also have the time budget to like portion all of those things out and freeze them. But it can be a way that if you could sort of like allocate a little bit of budget for bulk spending at the beginning of the month, you could cut down on your waste in general. You're cutting down very significantly on the amount of thinking that you're doing every week towards meal planning. And you're going to the grocery store less often because presumably you really only need to go like every 10 days for fresh ingredients or do a grocery order, whichever That's what I was going to say because I feel like you can plan monthly, but you can still shop as frequently as makes sense based on your time and your space, which is another consideration, especially 100%. when you live in a city or a yeah. smaller home. But I do think that you bring up something really interesting with planning seasonally. I also think that planning monthly and really like forcing yourself to like fill those slots. It also, it kind of reminds me of like our podcast content calendar (laughs) or like our Instagram planner. You know what I mean? Where you're like, what are the goals here? The goals are that I want, you know, I want to make sure that at least twice a week I have like those dirt cheap meals that my family loves and just kind of plug them in. And I know that I'm only going to do meat like once a week or twice a week. And then you plug that in for the whole month. And that way you make sure that you're like hitting your goals and seeing the whole month and then seeing what you can buy in bulk and seeing what you need to get every week, you know, or every 10 days. Yeah. And another cool thing about planning monthly is it really allows you to cook once and eat twice at the beginning of the month. If you do a batch of pork shoulder in the slow cooker and then you portion it out and freeze some for like later in the month, that's another way to not only stretch your budget, but also like save you time in the in the future. Totally. Because the thing is, when you do that without knowing when you're going to eat that second portion of that pulled pork, It gets lost in your freezer. It might get freezer burned by the time you find it. You know that in two weeks, pulled pork is back on your menu and you will definitely use it up because you've already committed to that. And I think that gets us to something really important, which is thinking about food waste, which isn't really like a meal planning tip per se, but just the way we always say that meal planning is a huge, has a huge impact on your budget. 
avoiding food waste also has a huge impact on your budget because it's not just about the amount of money you spend. It's also about maximizing every dollar you spend. It's about the money you don't throw away in right. wasted food, exactly. right? Exactly. So when you throw it away, that dollar that you spent, you actually only got 50 cents of value out of it. Yeah, I have to share that after kind of like being off of meal planning until we started working with Cook Smarts last year and then sort of like slowly ramping up, I've really started like doing a more thorough meal plan every week. And one of the things that's like shocking to me, like I somehow forgot, was that if you meal plan appropriately and you make plans for the leftovers, even if it's just like, okay, on Thursday, I'm done. Like I have too much stuff going on that day. I'm not cooking and everyone's just going to eat up the little bits of leftovers. At the end of the week, when it's time to like grocery shop and meal plan again, there's ve- there are very few things left in there for us to eat or to cook, which I think like is great. It gives me more opportunity to clean it, clean out the fridge. Totally. And also, it's deeply satisfying. Maybe that's like a weird <laughs> meal planner thing, but I'm like, look what I did. Yes, I totally. used all the things I bought, which is like I seems like a no brainer to other people, but brings me a little bit of joy. Totally. So, getting into like the nitty gritty of meal planning itself, what are some of the ways, like different strategies that you meal plan intentionally that save you money? Okay. This is actually not a personal one because I'm not very good at keeping up, but I do think it's important to plan against sales if you're in a season of your life where you really want to maximize your budget. So I know there are a lot of like coupon apps I think that gets harder when you're trying to meal plan for the month, but just kind of if you have the time and you're trying to maximize every penny, it can be really helpful just to like take your meal plan, whether it's for the week or the month and, you know, check it against any coupons that are available and to always remember about your freezer (laughs) when there's something that is on sale But you're like, oh, but I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to use that up this week. Yes. So we have a whole freezer episode that I think is a really important listen. I'm so glad you brought this up because this is also on my list to talk about. I think that sometimes people are like, okay, well, I'm going to look at all the circulars. I'm going to look at all the ads for all the grocery stores near me. And then they get really overwhelmed. So one of the things I've been doing lately is really just looking at proteins and when they go on sale. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Because that's really like one of the places where I can blow my budget if I'm not careful. I feel like it's really easy to stock up on like veggies and grains and legumes under a budget. But when you get into like dairy and meat and sometimes even tofu can be kind of or those meat alternatives can be really expensive. I can you can really just like blow your whole budget easily. So what I've been doing recently is like looking for things on sale and one week I'll buy just one protein. So I did this recently actually with chicken breasts, which is funny because you're the chicken lady. And it was like a big party pack. So we had a couple, like all the meat we ate in one week. I know that sounds boring, but it's like one week and there were other meatless meals in between was chicken breasts. We had crispy chicken, like the crispy chicken fingers, which is a didn't I just feed you recipe from a couple weeks ago. We had your sheet pan chicken fajitas from your book, Winner Winner Chicken Dinner. And then I just made a little riffy like chicken noodle soup one night. And that was like, three quarters of my chicken, but I took the other portion of chicken and froze it for a future week. And then I did that again the next week, but with like ground meat, like used a little bit during the week, but then froze the ground meat for future use. So like when I get to the end of the month or when I get three weeks down the line, I actually already have pre-purchased all of my proteins for one whole week. And that like makes the end of the month budget much, much smaller. So smart. I think you're right about protein, but I do want to just give a shout out to things that people may not realize you can freeze some Mm. dairy and dairy can be expensive depending on your, depending on the dairy itself. And also like what brands, organic, not organic, grass fed, blah, blah, blah. But if that's something you like that feels like a splurge is on sale, cheese is something you can freeze in a block if it's pre-shredded. There's a whole bunch. You can freeze milk even. So, you know, like ginger, tomato paste, pasta. I actually read something crazy that I've never tried, throwing whole citrus into the (laughs) 
freezer. Wait, what? I mean, yeah. I'm into it, but like, yes. then, then are you so, only using it for juicing? Yes, or? juicing and sit and zesting. Okay. I'm so behind that. Yes, totally. Yeah. So it's not going to be a garnish or well, who's garnishing their family dinner with lemons too, by the no, way? No, <laughs> but like if you had a bunch of little cuties at the end of a week that were of getting course, kind of sure. soft and you're like, oh, I could freeze these for future eating. This is not that, right? Correct. Okay. But for like squeezing for juice in the morning or like for an after school snack with a little seltzer or maybe you are going to bake like a yummy orange olive oil loaf. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, or throwing in a smoothie. I know a lot of yes, people like to put there you whole go. citrus in there for like the liquid and the fiber. Yeah. So, you know, go like look at what's freezable. Listen to that freezer episode because... I think that's the best way to take advantage of sales, to make sure that what you're buying is actually on your plan for the week or the month or however long, you know, you have, or you know it's freezable and you're going to put it in your freezer and make a note (laughs) so that you then return to it within the month. Otherwise, because I do think that we need to say, like, one thing you need to be careful of is to make a meal plan to buy everything on that meal plan and then also see that cottage cheese is on sale. And you're like, oh, great. I'm going to grab that cottage cheese, but it's not in your meal plan. You may have gotten it on sale, but you didn't need it at all in the first place. (laughs) Wait, I'm so glad you brought this up because I wrote down like in my notes for this episode, and I mean this so much, you guys, stop buying ingredients without a plan. Yeah. Full stop. I'm so guilty of this. And and actually, like, we talked before about your idea of, like, lunchbox veg, where you would be like, well, I'm just yeah. going to buy, like, a bag of peppers and, like, cucumbers and whatever, because it will get eaten, which is fine. But I've been a lot more intentional lately about, like, okay, these are the produce that I'm buying for snacks, and these are the produce that I'm buying for these specific, like, breakfast, lunch, and dinner plans. It's funny that you brought that up because I also have started getting more intentional because over the holidays, you know, it's all the, like, seasonal food and the kids are off of school. And I was like, you know, you're just in a festive mood. And so, like, let me grab that pineapple. And let me, man, like. That pineapple. And, and then <laughs> those mangoes. And then no one eats them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and again, those are things that can go into the freezer. But you don't want to pack your freezer without intention either. You know, of course, it happens from time to time. But if you're really like planning with an eye towards keeping a nice, tight, tidy budget, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. That's it. That's the whole episode. Stop buying okay. ingredients. Without <laughs> Stop a buying ingredients without a plan. I I'm mean, just kidding. I want kind to- of a little bit it is. Yeah. <laughs> It, that did bubble up for me that I think we should talk a little bit about like breakfast and lunch strategies. I mean, we do have that whole episode with Amira, but I think before in before times I would be like, oh, I'm just going to buy like whatever kind of like random breakfast ingredients. Like I'll make sure I have eggs and bacon and a box of cereal and yogurt and, 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 and until like there was just so much extra stuff in our fridge and in our pantry that like actually wasn't getting eaten. So now, like, because Brian mostly handles breakfast and lunches during the week, I'll ask him when I'm meal planning, like, what are two or three things that you want to have on hand for those meals this week? It keeps it really simple. And then we just, like, put it on our meal plan board so he knows. He's like, oh, I told Megan I wanted to do, like, English muffin pizzas and there's those ingredients in in the fridge for lunches. Yeah, that's super smart. You said a couple of things that brought up a couple of things for me. So I'm going to start riffing here. One is I need to share that I tried Costco at the end of last year. And this feels heavy for some reason. (laughs) No, I I found it to be, I found that I had really, really high food waste. Mm. The portion, like some things I was like, thank God I have this. It's convenient. And then other things I was like, this is like I got a thing of salsa that we ended up. It wasn't it was a new brand that was available and the kids were in a phase where they were eating chips and salsa and we didn't like the salsa. And it's a huge container. I'll just say that I ended up dragging a whole bunch of stuff to our community free fridge because Mm. I felt terrible. I don't know. So I just want to I'm not a seasoned enough big box store shopper that I feel like I really have a right to be giving advice on this. 
But I do want to say that I know you can get some great deals. But again, if it's not against your meal plan, be careful that you're not buying more than you guys will actually eat and end up with food waste. You know that Costco is set up for you to impulse buy too, right? Like they intentionally put all those super expensive electronics right when you walk in. So you're like, oh, I'm never going to buy a $5,000 TV. But yes, I will spend $50 on chicken. I can't. (laughs) I mean, I really can't. And you know, my family can eat a lot of chicken and a lot of chicken in a row. We've done it. (laughs) But like... I don't know. It was very, like, overwhelming to me. You know, we also just don't quite have the room for it. And I don't know. It was just, it was too much. I really thought that it was great for snacks that were already tried and true. Yes. Okay. My best friend in Georgia, Patty, she's like a Costco pro. But you saying you don't have enough room really made me think about, okay, well, how is her life set up differently from mine or Stacy's? She has like a whole bonus fridge freezer in her garage. She also has a huge like, it's not quite a walk-in pantry, but it's a pantry closet. So she really can like go to Costco and buy a bunch of things in bulk and then let them sit in her fridge or freezer not in her like everyday space to use up when she wants to. So I love the permission slip that like, okay, some advice around meal planning, like buying everything in bulk and like getting the best deal at Costco might not actually be that practical for every single family. Yeah, I think that is the bottom line here because I also have to tell you that I have a bonus fridge and freezer right now. Wait, where? Because since the pandemic, our Airbnb, we haven't been renting it out. And I... Have that I was like, space. does Stacy have a magic room in her house? No. <laughs> <Don't even laughs> okay, it's called ahead. a second kitchen that I have temporarily, but I don't think I'm that kind of cook. So, like, really reflect on that. Like, are you a meal planner? Are you not a meal planner? If you aren't going in for a month of meal planning, that's a good tip, but maybe not the right tip for you. So I get overwhelmed by knowing there's all this other stuff downstairs in the fridge. And like, did I look and like, am I going to use it? And did I remember to meal plan? Because I only meal plan week by week. Same. I don't know. So it just like, just know what kind of cook you are. I also like food shopping every week. I don't like running out of stuff, but I'd rather just like turn things over every week than have a whole bunch of food pile up. Because when I have a whole bunch of food pile up, I'm like, well, then I shouldn't have to shop again, but I do still have to shop for fresh ingredients. So like, what time did this save me? That's the energy I live with psychologically. And, And I just think it's a little game you play with yourself, depending on what kind of like planner and cook and shopper you are. Yeah. And I think for both of us, there's so so much tied to like our work around food. And like you sometimes I'll like plan a whole week and be like, oh, shoot, I planned five meals. But then I also like last minute have to cross test someone's recipe. And like, how am I going to use that those ingredients up or like use those leftovers up? And so we both really like we need shorter meal plans. Yes. I very much so need blank spaces in our meal plans um, that are either for using those things up or for taking a break from cooking and prepping. But what you were saying about like sometimes getting to the end of a week and like having rando ingredients in your fridge and like not really knowing how to use them up. I love this concept, which is also from Kendra Dachi of the Lazy Genius called Bizarro Meal Prep. (laughs) <laughs> which is where you <laughs> it's sometimes called like reverse meal planning too, where you like go into your fridge and pull out everything that you didn't use up and either like make a plan for it on your meal plan or like if it's just a bunch of carrots and they're kind of like getting soft, maybe you peel and cut them up and put them in a little ice water for snacking later in the week. But it's like a really great way that sometimes you can jumpstart meal planning And reduce your food waste. Yes. And I think that even if you aren't doing it at the end of the week to use up those rando bits of things that are left over, that's an important meal planning tip in general that you should start with what's already in your fridge and your pantry and your freezer. And yes, I mean all three. Don't just look at your like crisper drawer and what's about to like wilt and turn. Really look through everything so that you're turning things over. Especially in your freezer. People think that 
stuff lasts in their freezer forever. It really doesn't. Like, especially if you aren't like a super pro freezer packer, don't have like airtight seals. Meat is going to get freezer burn. Like things are going to get buried. So definitely plan against what you have. Yes. Okay. That leads me to this really big thought that I'm having that I want to share with you. Pantry basics can be really cheap and sometimes they're also the place where we splurge. But I want to throw out this idea that like no matter what your budget is right now, it's like a really, really powerful time to budget around your values. Yeah. So for me, that means like I'm going to actually buy the store brand pasta, even though I like some name brand pasta, dried pastas better. But like it doesn't really, it's pasta. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. My kids are going to eat the shit out of it anyways. Totally. <laughs> but like buying the cheaper, like generic things like pasta, canned tomatoes, even sugar and flour and butter. But then using my extra budget to buy like, very flavorful meal helpers from black owned businesses and women owned businesses right now. So that like I I'm really like being powerful and intentional even with a small budget. Yes, I think this is really important. There's also a lot of different directions that you can go with this idea. One direction, I feel like this also often comes up <laughs> with you because it's usually like baking stuff. But I'm going to say like make some of this stuff DIY. So the whole premise of my first cookbook, Make It Easy, was this idea that there are some pantry staples, some basics that are way easier to make homemade than you think and will save you money. And if not, if those two things don't come together, it isn't super easy and or it doesn't save you a ton of money. I'm not going to tell you to make it homemade. Buy store-bought. But things like nut butters, quick jams, broths, even ricotta cheese, granola, like turning rolled oats into instant oats, you needing your blender, plant-based milks, um, seasoning mixes. There's just a whole bunch of basics that you can DIY so that you can then use your budget in different ways. You were talking about big like flavor boosters from businesses that you want to support. For me, it's also buying quality meat. So a lot of the meat that I like to buy is very costly. So saving on something so I can afford that meat and also thinking about the different cuts of meat too is a really big one. Yes. Okay. I love that. And that's, again, like a really great example of budging for your values. Yes. I want to throw one more at us and then we should wrap it out because I know that our brilliant listeners group is going to have so much more to say on this subject. But I now like cannot remember who I saw share this on Instagram, but I just thought it was like a really great tip, which is like, it can be hard right now if you're on a tight budget to afford your favorite like takeout meals. And also there's just so it's so much more layered now than it ever was before to try and go out for like a quick lunch or, you know, do the drive through for your favorite at your favorite coffee shop or whatever. But one thing that you can do, which like lets you have that luxury and save money and still support the local businesses that you love, which are struggling, like restaurants are just struggling across the board right now, is to go and buy like the thing that makes that meal special for you. So if you have a noodle place that you love their peanut sauce, go in there and ask them if you can buy yes. a jelly container of the peanut sauce and then cook the noodles and veggies at home and you like still get that joy you still supported that business and you still save money. I can guarantee you it'll cost you less than one bowl of noodles prepared wood. And they're like so happy to share it with you. Absolutely. That's so, so smart. Okay. You already mentioned our listeners group. I feel like they are going to have so many suggestions on this one. Yeah. And did you notice that like um, everyone came to the rescue and helped a listener, Roslyn, avoid yet another trip to the grocery store, which, hey, that's another way to save money and not waste food. Um, She was looking for a beef and broccoli recipe that was good and used frozen broccoli. And everyone had so many different ideas. And she said it was delicious. And she even shared a picture. Yes, that was amazing. I totally saw that. And if the rest of you listening want me and Megan and all of those other busy cooks excited to help you out the way that they did Rosalind, join us. We are at Didn't I Just Feed You across all social media and that listeners community that we were just talking about. It's a group on Facebook for now. The password to join us is Whiskey. 
make sure you subscribe to our newsletter to get an exclusive recipe and our pick of the week every single week. You can subscribe at didn't I just feed you .com or there's a link in our Instagram bio. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to didn't I just feed you wherever you get your podcasts so that you don't miss an episode. Our music is Good Old Times by Alex Cohen, provided by Jimendo. A huge thank you to our editor, Samantha Gatsik. I am Stacy, And I'm Megan. Stay sane and well-fed until next week. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review.